Hi everyone, it's Dopamine Coasters back again with another video after so long. I apologize for the fact that I have not uploaded a lot of content very often. I've been very busy lately with stuff that has nothing to do with roller coasters or parks as a matter of fact. My goal for this channel is to at least upload a video every once a week, and I also plan on filming off-road footage videos and doing reviews for at least one or two coasters per park I visit, and also do a rankings video for every new park I visit. But so far that's been a lot trickier than anticipated, and I've gotten a lot slower with that. For example, I couldn't do off-ride footage when I went to Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and I was super late on my Pantheon review, and I'm also late on this ranking video. Hopefully I can get back to consistently uploading those types of videos in the near future. Anyways, Busch Gardens Williamsburg has a well-diverse coaster lineup that focuses on quality over quantity. I got a chance to do every single coaster there except for Grover's Alpine Express, so I will be ranking all 8 of those that I rode. This park rankings list was by far the hardest to put together, just because there are no bad coasters at BGW, and every single coaster there is such good quality, so it was so hard to pinpoint which coaster is better than the other, because they are all so good in their own ways. But I did end up coming up with an accurate list of what coasters I preferred over others. The coasters at the lower spots in this list are still really good, but there are still other coasters that are higher than those ones, because I slightly prefer them more. This is also my favorite park in the SeaWorld chain. I know that in my vlogs I was complaining about the quick queue system and the way the employees were doing things, but it did get better towards the end of my visit, and the overall park atmosphere, landscaping, theming, music, and ride lineup is what makes me put this park above Busch Gardens Tampa. But without further ado, let's get into the list. Number 8, Tempesto, the park's premier ride Skyrocket 2. This might seem a bit low on this list because on my top 25 coaster video I published a while ago, there was a Skyrocket 2 in the number 18th spot, but that was one with only two cars and no comfort collars. I unequivocally prefer the ones with only two cars and no comfort collars. And no, it has nothing to do with the comfort collars themselves. I generally appreciate Skyrocket 2s because they are a madhouse of different types of forces all combined into one small footprint. I always talk about the twisted drop in the back row and the strong ejector airtime it delivers, but the strong ejector airtime is only on the ones with two cars. Although the drop on Tempesto does have sustained ejector, it's still a lot stronger with only two cars because there's more momentum going down the drop. With three cars, it goes down the drop at a lot slower of a pace. This is not a bad ride by any means, and the comfort collars don't bother me at all. I just prefer every single other coaster in the park to this. Number 7. Invadar, the park's GCI family wooden coaster. Although this is a small scale family GCI, this sure did pack a punch. The track profiling actually surprised me with the minimal roughness. It did have that typical wooden coaster track vibration, but it didn't even get close to jackhammering. The drop had a surprising stomach dropping sensation for its scale, which is a common theme with this park. The rest of the ride was a relentless barrage of floater airtime and laterals. It also was decently intense too. Number 6. Loch Ness Monster, the park's aero looper. This is by far my favorite aero looper. The thing that's the most surprising about this coaster is not the two interlocking loops. It's the two drops. Both drops, especially the first one, have some of the strongest stomach dropping sensations I've ever felt on any roller coaster drop, along with some wild sustained floater airtime. I find this a bit odd, but the drops that are the least steep have stronger stomach dropping sensations. If someone knows why that is, please tell me. The two loops also have some amazing positive and vertical Gs. I recall graying out on the first loop. A lot of people seem to hate the helix in the tunnel, but I feel like it's a nice touch to the ride. It makes it feel like a graceful journey through some already fantastic scenery. The only downside to this ride are the potholes that occur at the bottom of both loops, which will shake you up a bit, but the rest of the ride really does make up for it. Number 5. Griffin, the park's B&M dive coaster. Out of all three dive coasters I've ridden, this is by far my favorite one. Dive coasters are known for their strong stomach dropping sensation on the drop, but on Griffin, it was even stronger. It was also very strong on the second drop too. In terms of the rest of the layout, it is on par with Shikra, except for the fact that it meanders around until the splashdown. Number 4. Alpengeist, the park's B&M invert. Although I do slightly prefer Montu to Alpengeist, this is my second favorite B&M invert. The first half is so drawn out but in such a good way, it really draws out the forces. I also said that the stomach dropping sensation was a common theme at BGW. Well, you get some of that on the drop off the mid course. BGW is literally a stomach dropping paradise. The thing that caught me off guard the most was the cobra roll. This is by far the snappiest element I've ever felt on a B&M invert. It abruptly snaps you to the left, and then to the right. The final inversion is also very snappy, 
just not as much as the Cobra roll. Number 3, Apollo's Chariot, the park's B&M Mini Hyper. Before coming into it, I had very low expectations for this coaster because I kept hearing that it's the weakest B&M Hyper, but I was pleasantly surprised to find out that that was not the case at all. Even though this drop is less steep than Nitro's, I still prefer this drop because it actually has a stronger stomach dropping sensation, believe it or not. The floater airtime is also a tad bit stronger and more abrupt than the drop. The rest of the ride's hills delivers a lot stronger floater airtime than Nitro, and the floater airtime in the back row was nice and satisfying. The drop off the mid course in the back row still had that abrupt ejector pop, and my absolute favorite part of the ride is on the last hill, when the train is going upwards and you think it's about to hit the brakes, but instead, it suddenly dips downwards, giving a fantastic pop of airtime and the stomach dropping sensation combined. That part caught me by surprise on my first time riding it. Number 2. Verbolten, the park's Zyre multi-launch coaster. This may come to a surprise for some of you, especially since Verbolten is deemed as a family coaster. But hell nah, this thing ain't even close to a family coaster. First of all, let's talk about theming and show scenes. Absolutely love the aspect of meandering around outdoors, and then forcefully launching indoors while passing through some special lighting effects, and then after that, going through the most intense moment on any roller coaster. Yup, I said it. The indoor dark helix on Verbalton has by far the most intense positive G's I have ever experienced on any roller coaster. And yes, even more forceful than I-305. Isn't that insane? This helix is super underrated, and every time I rode this, I had a sustained gray out that lasted several seconds. It wasn't the type of gray out that I felt on I-305, where I saw a small white cloud in front of my eyes. It was a type of gray out where my entire head and feet felt like they were being smashed all into one. And even though it was dark in the room, I saw and felt that TV sensation right in front of my eyes. The one that looks like a TV screen, that looks very very blurry. Now, that's just downright wild. This ride has so many good elements, including the drop track, which has violent and abrupt ejector airtime, combined with an insane stomach dropping feeling. Then follows a very forceful launch that will pin your head against the seat. The only downside to this element is that if you're sitting in the back row, it can cause your head to be suddenly jolted backwards at the beginning of the launch. The final drop gives more stomach dropping sensations, if there weren't enough already, combined with amazing sustained floater airtime. The rest of the layout doesn't do that much, and does rattle its way through a bit, but at least it's a nice break from all the non-stop action that took place most of the ride. This ride definitely caught me by surprise, and is currently in my top 25, and I do even prefer Verbolton to Cheetah Hunt. Number 1, Pantheon, the park's Intamin Multipass LSM coaster. I already uploaded a separate review going into more detail, but I will try to summarize my thoughts on this coaster the best I can in this video. This multi-launch coaster is by far one of Intamin's finest creations yet. When I rode it for the first time in the back row, I was quite underwhelmed, mainly because I had my expectations so high. But when I rode it for the second time in the front row, I was exceptionally impressed. This layout is literally out of a coaster enthusiast's dream. I call this a compilation of every coaster enthusiast's favorite elements all combined into one layout. The variety on this coaster is so good. The first launch is not the most forceful out there, but it still has a surprising kick to it. The first year G Winder has such good hang time and is my second favorite inversion. The ejector bunny hill going forwards and backwards delivers violent ejector pops. One in a backwards motion and one in a forwards motion. The drop off the top hat in the back row has insane sustained ejector. The outer bank is almost as good as Steel Vengeance's and has a great combination of airtime and laterals. The Zero G style is definitely my favorite, but I've never really liked Zero G styles as much as others. The final wave turn in the front row also had a great combination of airtime and laterals. Not to mention that the low to the ground turns also pull some intense positive Gs. To this day, I prefer Pantheon to Velocicoaster, which some people may consider controversial, but the elements and uniqueness of Pantheon is just a bit better in my opinion. I love Intamin's new generation LSM coasters, and I'd really like to see a lot more come to the United States in the near future.